G'day, I'm Ashley Young. I make custom sharpening gear for the meat industry. Today we're going to have a look at the steak knife or large slicing knife. So the difference between this knife and a slicing knife, well there is none really. Um, we have this set up for a steak knife the same as uh, we would a slicing knife um, and some guys do prefer to use these bigger knives for slicing. Um, so being such a big knife we need to have them super thin at the edge. Um, so we're going to go through and sharpen this one just to show that um, firstly we can sharpen these bigger knives um, on our sharpening kit and um, we do set them up very similar or the same as what we did um, when we did the previous video on the slicing knife. So when we look at the this knife here, um, this has been hologrammed. Um, it has been rubbed flat, um, but because it's such a big, big knife, I probably don't have to get that scratch pattern all the way to the back of the knife. Um, about halfway up is generally enough. Um, and this particular knife uh, is made by Dexter Russell, and the steel in these is quite hard. Um, so it will take a bit of work initially when the knife's new to thin it out and get that factory edge off it. So if you have it hologrammed, um, it's going to speed speed the process up. And if you're a butcher out there and you're cutting steaks, you will want these super thin because um, you're going to be taking care cutting your steaks. You're not generally going to be hitting bone or anything, but I'd be very careful about having it in your scabbard rattling around with other knives. I'd um, prefer to see you have that in a separate sheath or uh, in a scabbard that um, keeps it separate from the other knives. So what we're firstly going to do, we're going to put this on the flat bench stone, we're going to thin it out some. This particular knife um, does have a few small chips in it so we're going to make sure that we're going to give that a good rub back and make sure we get that good burr and make so all them little um, chips in that blade do come out. So again we're going to put our cut resistant or Kevlar gloves on and just make sure you comply with your uh, work health and safety policy uh, whether you're required to wear cut resistant gloves or not when you're sharpening okay so we're gonna put this on the bench stone gonna put it flat and again torque that knife so the pressure is at the front of the knife, not right at the back of the knife. And we'll do it in three stages, being such a long blade. We'll rub the front, the middle, and then towards put the pressure at the back of the knife. So what I'm checking for, I'm looking in the light to see how much of that edge is still on there. I don't want to remove it completely, but I do do want to thin it out a bit more in some areas. Okay, so we're going to switch out to the other side.
Okay, and because this is a plastic handled work knife, we're never too worried about scratching that blade up. If it was a custom kitchen knife, we'd probably do things a little bit different um, and try and keep that blade pristine, but because, you know, $40 knife, we're not too worried about. It's better to get them scratches on there, get that nice and thin to get the performance out of it. Okay, so wipe the grit off that knife. So now we're going to move over to the sharpening kit. Again, going to sit that clamp on there about halfway. Nip that front screw up and torque the back back one up so it's locked in there. Make sure it's secure. Probably down a bit at the front there. Okay. That's not going to move. So we're going to start off with the 400 grit. Snap it in there. And again, around the 25 degrees. So that's four times. You can feel that burr all the way along. Uh, you guys that are just cutting steaks with these knives could run these thinner than that, probably three times or even two times up and back to get the burr might be suitable. So do the same on the other side. And check for a burr. So we can feel that burr all the way along. So now we're just going to proceed to alternate from side to side to cut that burr off, get rid of it. Now we'll move to the 600. And again, pull it down our plastic or piece of wood to help remove some of that grit off the blade. So now we're just polishing the edge and we alternate from side to side. Okay, it's enough, so we'll move to the 1200. Again, get rid of that grit and help remove that bits of burr that may be hanging on the front of that knife.
Okay, so we want to go to the next step, being a steak knife or a slice knife as we've done before. We want highly polished edge on this knife. So we'll go and move on to the polished stone. So really getting into it with this polished stone. Again, doing our circles up and back, changing that scratch pattern around. So what we want to do is really remove them scratches and really polish that cutting edge. And nice and soft too. Don't don't go pushing pushing hard on this. One last time, just pull it down our plastic. Okay, so again we've got our old big pen, tested for smoothness, it's glassy smooth, all the way down that edge, and it bites straight in, as soon as it touches that plastic, all the way along it. And again, make sure we undo those screws properly before we take it out. So there you have it. Steak knife. This is an 8 inch steak knife. You can do 10, 12 inch steak knives. Depends what you use in your job. Uh, this kit will handle them. Super thin. Make sure your stones are kept clean with your jiff. Don't use too much pressure and keep them nice and thin on your bench stone. So there you have it guys. If that was helpful, make sure you subscribe down below. Give us a like if, it was, if you liked it or put a comment in there if you want to ask questions or comment on uh, what we've done here today and we'll keep this content coming um, with plenty of ideas stealing, sharpening, different knives, boning knives, legging knives that sort of thing so we'll keep it coming. Righto, thank you.